Good day, everyone! In the fight against the coronavirus, here are 15 additional precautions for a hospital setting based here in the United States. It is based on my personal experience. I am sharing this information to everyone to give us all a better chance to fight this pandemic virus as one, especially those places that are not yet prepared for possible surge of corona cases. So let's start. Number one, UV light. After doing the regular cleaning process, we make sure to run down the room with a UV light machine. This machine is called Clorox Healthcare Optimum UV System. We normally use this for all our isolation rooms, mainly for MRSA and C. diff patients, as some of these pathogens tend to linger in the room even after a patient has been discharged, which may cause cross-contamination with the incoming patient. So running the room with a UV light machine eliminates those chances. We run this UV machine throughout the patient's room in different locations for 5 minutes each time. For COVID patients, we also have to do it around the hallway and nurse stations to eliminate the further possible spread of the infection. Though this is not scientifically proven against COVID-19 patients per se, but having additional measures won't hurt anyone. Number 2. Negative Room Pressure Checks Patients who are suspected or possible COVID patients should be placed in a room with negative pressure. This type of room will keep the pathogens within the room, thus preventing the spread of infection via the air circulation. Negative pressure means there is a vacuum pressure inside the room, which uses the suction of a fan or suction method. So every shift, we have to check if the negative pressure is maintained or working. One simple way to check is to cut a small piece of paper or tissue paper, then place it in front of the patient's door around the floor area. If there is a negative pressure inside the room, the paper will be sucked in as easy as that. If the piece of paper has not moved, then the negative pressure room should be re-evaluated and fixed immediately. Number 3. Screening Process Even before the patients arrive in the emergency room department, patients are being screened properly at a temporary pre-registration area built mainly as a major precaution against the coronavirus. Patients who are deemed to be possible candidate as COVID patients will be directed to a special area in the emergency room meant for PUI or person under investigations for the coronavirus. This limits cross-infection to other non-COVID patients. There are specific medical staff designated to this area and they are all equipped with the PPEs to limit exposure as well. If they are deemed stable enough to go home, they will be advised to self-quarantine if applicable. Number 4. Isolation Ward If the patient are deemed to be admitted and considered PUI, they will be placed on a special ward meant for COVID-related cases only, away from the regular patients who are prone to contracting this disease if exposed due to their illness and fragile state. They will be placed on an isolation or private rooms only. Number 5. Limiting Staff There are designated staff nurse and doctors who are assigned to handle and take care of COVID-related patients only for the entire hospital. They are not allowed to handle other non-COVID patients to prevent the spread of infection as other non-COVID patients may be too ill or immunocompromised that they are prone to catching this virus, which may cause them dire complications. So we have the same staff nurses and doctors who rotate regularly in handling these cases. Number 6. Multitasking Since we are trying to limit exposure to other medical staff and employees, nurses are expected to multitask. We will do plebotomy work, meaning taking the patient's blood test regularly instead of letting the plebotomies do their regular routines. Nurses will also act as a respiratory therapist, rendering nebulization or breathing treatments. Provide total nursing care, meaning no nursing aids will be utilized for the time being, as opposed to our usual routine. We have to do our own vital signs, serve food or feed the patients, bathe the patients, and etc. Nurses also do the housekeeping work cleaning the rooms, mapping the hallways, and trash disposals, and sometimes even doing some maintenance work if possible. Number 7. Antibacterial or Microbiotic Wipes We use these to disinfect multiple items while taking care of the patients. Best example is the face shield. Since most of us are reusing our face shields or eye shield, reusing not by choice but due to shortage of supplies worldwide. We use this as well to clean patients' rooms and other things that are frequently being handled by patient and medical staff, like doorknobs, anterooms, drawers, handles, and etc. Number 8. 
limit admissions to other cases. Hospitals statewide are instructed not to admit patients unless necessary to make way for COVID-related patients and to limit possible exposure to the disease. Patients who are deemed to be more manageable in an outside hospital setting will be discharged as soon as possible. Number 9. Limit surgical operations. Operating rooms will only be accepting emergency cases or procedures that are deemed to be life-threatening ones. So, elective cases will not be entertained for the time being. So, no facelifts, no nose lift, no liposuction, or other similar procedures that are non-essential. Number 10. OR scrubs. OR scrubs are provided for staff taking care of these patients. This will limit the risk of bringing the virus out of the hospital and to the public. Once the shift ends, it is advisable to take a shower and dispose of the OR scrub suit to the designated laundry area for washing and disinfecting. Number 11. Double gloving. Double gloving helps in a lot of ways against the coronavirus. One way is through the gowning of reuse items while taking care of COVID-related patients. This will also limit exposure to the virus as some of the gloves tend to break or tear apart while being used. Double gloving will also limit entry and re-entry to patient's room, especially if the first layer of the glove has been soiled in some way, which works great if you are cleaning the patient in some way and deem that the first layer is now soiled, wherein you just have to remove the first layer, then proceed to the next step. No need to step out or remove the soiled glove, then put in a new one. Number 12. Reusing N95 masks. N95 masks are being asked to be reused in some hospitals due to the scarcity of it. Most of the hospitals here in the United States are asked to place the used N95 mask inside the paper bag after use. It is not ideal, but given our situation, it is better to have a working N95 mask rather than not having one at all. Number 13. Double masking. To prevent the N95 mask from getting further contaminated or to limit its exposure to the virus, using an additional layer by placing a surgical mask on top of the N95 is being practiced. Then, after leaving the patient's room, discard the surgical mask only. Reuse the N95 mask by placing back on the paper bag. Number 14. No visitors allowed. Visitors are restricted inside the hospital, not only for COVID-related patients, but for all patients. This will limit the entry of possible carriers going into the hospital, wherein other patients are prone to getting the infectious disease, taking into consideration that some of the coronavirus carriers are asymptomatic. Number 15. Limit exposure to patients. It is strongly advised to the medical staff to limit entry to the patient's room, if possible, by doing multiple things in one go. Some ways of doing it are by adjusting routine works to the medication administration timing. To call patients via the room phone prior to the entry and explain procedures, medications, routine work that you will be doing once you go inside the room. You can also ask the patient if they need something else in which you can provide. This will help you prepare everything ahead and secure all the things you need in one go. And more importantly, this will limit your exposure time to the COVID-19 virus. As well as, you can save some PPEs or personal protective equipment by limiting entry to the patient's room. Number 16. Screening of employees. The hospital designated one entrance for hospital staff to go through every day, wherein there's a special team that will screen the incoming employees. They will do an assessment to check for fever, cough, shortness of breath, and all other COVID-related symptoms. They will also inquire for any history of exposure to persons with active COVID or possible COVID. This is particularly applicable for doctors, especially the visiting ones. If the staff are deemed to be unfit to work, wherein they might be showing some signs and symptoms of the coronavirus disease in a mild form, they will be directed to the emergency room for further evaluation. Or they will be asked to do home quarantine, then coordinate with the Human Resources Department. By doing the screening, it will help protect the vulnerable patients under the hospital's care. I hope by sharing this personal experience, we can fight the spread of the coronavirus together. Please, if you have any other recommendations, corrections, or other practices that you deem are essential in fighting this pandemic virus, please post a comment to help spread the information to others. Please share this video to help spread the information and help put an end to this virus as one. This is Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. Thank you and God bless.